Yeah. Yeah. It's not always fun. Exactly. It's progress. This special meeting of the Judson Board of Trustees is hereby called to order at 6 p.m. I am very pleased that you have taken time to join us this evening. In compliance with state government code on open meetings, tonight's agenda has been appropriately posted. We have established a quorum and we will take roll. Just a second though, I've got my two things mixed up here. Okay, there we go, we can proceed to All right, we have six board members present. Um, Mr. Macias appears to be absent. Um, In two seconds. He'll be here? Two seconds. Okay, he's on his way. Um, we will start with uh, acknowledgement of citizens to be heard. Um, this is a time for citizens, staff, or students to provide their comments to the board. A meeting that is open to the public under the act is one that the public is entitled to attend. However, the act does not give the public a right to speak at such public meetings except to address their grievances through the proper channels. As a courtesy to the public, the Judson Independent School District Board of Trustees allows time for public comment. Statements and questions from the audience will not be permitted during other portions of the meeting, so please sign up for public audience if you have comments to present. To have your comments heard tonight, your name and the topic of your comments must be written on the sign-in sheet prior to the start of the meeting, which is located at the rear of the meeting room. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes to complete his or her comments. As the presiding officer, I will strictly enforce that time limit. Also, profanity, yelling, inappropriate, uncivil, or discriminatory comments will not be permitted. In accordance with Judson ISD board policy BED local, in the event your comment in my judgment as the presiding officer constitutes a complaint or charge against an employee or officer, it will be necessary for me to interrupt you, ask you to stop, and direct you to seek resolution of your complaint through the district's appropriate formal grievance policy, DGBA for employee complaints, FNG for student or parent complaints, or GF for public complaints. By law, the Judson Independent School District Board of Trustees cannot lawfully discuss, deliberate, make comments, or make a decision on any matter raised in the public comment period, which is not specifically listed on the board agenda for this meeting. With those cautions in mind, we will now be glad to hear general comments. Uh, Mr. Joe Ramon um, is the first person to sign up to speak about the superintendent search. Good evening, thank you. Uh, my name is Joe Ramon. <clears throat> I want to take this opportunity. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to be heard and say uh, thank you for all the hard work that you do because after all, this is School Board Appreciation Month. So again, thank you. Uh, when I first retired from the Army, I applied for a warehouse manager position with HEB. I was excited because I made it to the uh, third round of interviews. But I had a friend who had been working with HEB for many years and he said, Joe, HEB hires from within. 
They believe in taking care of the people who are already part of the team. Sure enough, that's what happened. I share this with you because we have an excellent candidate for our next superintendent, someone who grew up in our district. He went to Live Oak Elementary School, which is now Ed France, went to Kirby uh, Middle School uh, for one year, which back in the day we called it Kirby Junior High, and two years at Kitty Hawk. And he's a 1981 graduate of Judson High School. He's a retired senior non-commissioned officer of the United States Air Force, and to this day, he still lives the Air Force values, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. The reason I know that he still lives those values is because I served with him when he was a principal at Widener High School. Notice I said served with him because he treated us all the same. He always stressed we're a team, from his assistant principals, teachers, parents, custodians, he treated everyone equally. On that note, he's a professional. He would always praise you in public, but chastise you in private. Trust me, there were many times he called me into his office to chew me out. But I'm thankful for that because he did it so I can be become better. That's a leader. He or she will let you know when you're messing up and she'll show you how to correct your mistakes. So in your search for our next superintendent, I wanna let you know, you don't have to look too far. Again, this candidate was raised in Judson ISD has been serving here since 2007 for almost 20 years. He has held many positions, principal, assistant superintendent for operations, deputy superintendent for administration and operations, and is currently serving as interim superintendent. He knows our district. He's had the opportunity for other positions in other school districts, but he's never left. Why? Because Judson ISD is his home. Judson ISD is where he belongs. He's a family man. He's a godly man. He's a person for this job. So it is with my sincere conviction, I want to encourage you to be like HEB and hire from within. To give Dr. Milton Rodfields III the opportunity to serve as our next superintendent. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Betty, were there any other people that signed up to speak? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so next we're going to go ahead and um, see presentations from the search firm. Excuse me. Oh. Oh, oh yes. Mr. Macias was, arrived as um, we were doing the public comment and has marked himself present. Thank you. Um, and uh, so we'll go on and um, to our next item, which is presentations and interviews from the superintendent search firms. Um, we've invited three firms to present today. Um, we're gonna draw names to see who goes first and, and take them in that order. Um, and uh, as a professional courtesy, you are allowed, this is an open meeting, so you are allowed to stay in here during the presentations. Um, but uh, we also um, you know, don't want to give an unfair advantage to anybody, so um, you can step out as well uh, during the other people's presentations. Um, we said 15-minute presentations with five to 10 minutes for follow-up questions. And so we'll, I will be timing the presentations for those 15 minutes just to make sure it's the same for everybody. Um, all right, so I'm going to draw names out of here. First will be Tasby. All right. Do you want to draw the other two? Or you okay, yes, we'll, we'll do the other two just so we know uh, what order we'll go in. HYA is the second one, and JG Consulting will be third. Okay. I think that was HYA. Do y'all need some support in getting your presentation up or? Um, we sent it, we sent it over. Okay, I think Betty is just getting everybody settled okay. outside and then um, she, she has them ready to go. Okay. Or, or Ms. Gosh can help yeah. too. <clears throat> oh, it's right here. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah, very good. We can get you going. You can click the clicker or you can okay. push the space bar. Okay. Sure. Oh, so you can do it with this as well. Okay. 
Hey, Ms. Rodriguez, are we oh. ready? Yes, whenever okay. you're ready, go ahead. Great. Thanks. Well, I'm Butch, I'm Butch Feltner. I've um, been with TASB now 16 years, and uh, have, all I do is superintendent searches. And we've been doing superintendent searches for quite some time. We've conducted about around 850 superintendent searches in our history. So we've been doing this for quite some time. Um, more Texas public school districts use us than any other search firm over our history. And so we're kind of happy with that. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of the processes. You're going to see a lot of the similarities and things like that. And uh, But before we go on, uh, with us tonight, Dr. Marion Strauss, she's going to be going over uh, the process and how things work. And then Mr. Craig Stocksteel is here, and he represents TASB. He is your field service representative that calls on your district. So we, we actually have boots on the ground that walk in every school district in the state of Texas. So uh, that's, that's helpful when you're looking for a superintendent. So uh, without further ado, you can see this is our team. Uh, Ms. Christina McKee, she's our program coordinator, kind of the backbone of the whole process, and uh, she makes things work for us. And then I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Strauss. Good evening. We are all retired superintendents, the three of us. Christina is the only one on our team that is not. She's an HR professional and uh, has been in many levels of HR. Again, as Butch said, you are going to hear a lot of things that will sound very familiar. The process itself is, is pretty much consistent throughout search firms. This is, TASB is going to manage the planning which is sitting down with you and developing a timeline. The profile sessions, uh, we have an online survey that we attach to your district's webpage so that everyone in the community, all of the constituency, can give their input into uh, who they think uh, should be the next superintendent, what those qualifications and characteristics uh, should be that those people uh, hold. So we're going to set all of that up. We're going to advertise. Our three main advertisement uh, uh, areas are with TASA, T-A-S-A, stay by the mic, I know, TASA, our webpage, which is TASB, of course, and then Texas ISD. Uh, all, of your, all of our sister organizations throughout the United States advertise our searches at no additional fee so it becomes a national search through all of the school board associations around the United States and we work very closely with them that is a, 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 a partnership that we have we meet together Butch is the past president of the National Affiliation of Superintendent Searchers and so we meet on a, a yearly basis and talk about what's going on in other states and we have that um, reciprocity with them. So they advertise ours and we advertise all of theirs. We take care of the application process. Our application is a little more extensive than most application processes that you will see. Uh, it will contain whatever qualifications and characteristics come up as being the most important to you. That will be part of the application. Every applicant has to go in and write a narrative as to how that qualification fits their career. So what they've done in the past that actually addresses those areas that are going to be most important to you as a board. It might be communication, it might be finance, it might be uh, community relations, or probably all of those. It's usually about six different areas. But through that, you get a very good sense of the writing uh, ability and the writing skills that the candidates have, as well as what kind of experience they've had in those specific areas. So we're going to take care of that. We do the recruiting. Uh, we don't strong arm anyone, but we call people that you've seen presenting or that you're interested in and or those people that we believe would be a great fit in your district and ask them to take a look at the district. We also treat all internal candidates exactly the same. We believe that in order for them to have the best, fairest shot, they need to do all of the requirements that are, requ that all of the 
things that we require all the candidates to do, all the applications, the, the profiles, all of the things that are important, they do as well. We contact all the references. Again, you saw the chart with our field service. We contact people that are not on their reference list. We dig deep and uh, we do a deep dive into their past experience in the districts that they've worked in and in the current districts that they're in. And we do that through our field service. We have them throughout the state and so we can contact those people and find out what we need to about them. And then throughout the United States, we find out through our sister organizations, again, the people that do the same thing we do in all the various states. They know their people, we know our people. And so we can, we do that. We will set up the interview process. We go through it very clearly and specifically with all of you so that there are no questions. We take care of making all of the calls to set those up and those calls that are not so fun to make when you tell them they were not, uh, they did not make it to the second round. But we take care of all of those things and then we will also help with the contract negotiations. We do that throughout the process so that there are no surprises at the end when you're ready to hire. Your commitment, where well, there are team commitments on your part uh, everyone, and you all know this, I know you treat each other that way, but uh, it, there's a lot of confidential, confidentiality that's uh, part of our process. We ask you to sign a confidentiality agreement, and, all, and what it means is that you will not discuss any of the candidates outside of executive session uh, with anyone in the district or outside of the district. And that's important because we want the very best people applying for your position and they trust us. They trust TASPE that that information is not going to get back to their home district. Only one person is going to be sitting in that chair and the rest have to go back to their, their current district. So we wanna make sure that we make that as a positive for both you and the candidates. And then you will help us in the profile development, of course, those things that are important with you. We will meet with you and, and go through that and make sure that um, we're all on the same page and what's important to one board member is important to all of the board members. The profile sessions, again, we can come into the district and actually talk to people in person if you ask, if you request that. We do automatically do an online uh, profile profile sessions, and so we will take care of that. Again, our application process is not only the application and the resume, but the qualification and characteristic statements. Uh, it also, our process includes a video snippet of each candidate, part of the application, they have to go in and answer three questions. They have a minute to answer them, but when you receive all the applications, you will be able to look at those videos and actually see how they conduct themselves. It is not a selection tool. It is another tool for you to look at the criteria and, and actually look at how they conduct their themselves. So we're really excited about that. There's only a couple of search firms that are doing that. And so you will have an opportunity to see them and listen to their responses uh, during the, uh, during the time that you'll be reviewing the applications. And then we will be here to go through a very extensive process for the selection. Uh, again, uh, only one person will, will be hired for that position. We usually narrow your pool down to six. There's no magic number about six. It can be eight. We've had as many as nine. It's entirely up to the board. We're going to, we, guide and direct, but every board changes our process just a tiny bit. So it may be the number of applicants that you talk to, you may decide to change the timeline a little bit. So we will work with you in any way necessary to make sure that you have the best experience uh, uh, possible and that we get the very best person that's going to be the next leader of Judson ISD and that they work well with all seven of you. So after the, after the search is over, 
and uh, you have a new superintendent in place, uh, TASB's board development will come in and do a session with you, a transition session, so that up front we're going to have you talk about the things with your new leader that are important for you to talk about at the beginning. Sometimes we get too busy uh, at doing the work and we don't take the time to talk about what is it that you expect from them in the first three months, in the first six months, and then also start talking about what it is that you're going to evaluate them at uh, their summative evaluation. All of those things can happen during the um, transition session, and that's part of our process. There's no additional fee for that, just uh, expenses for either Orrin Moore, Kay Douglas, uh, David Koppel, one of them will come in and conduct the transition session. And I know I've seen all of you at TASB events, so I know you're familiar with all of them because they're the backbone of the training. Oh, oh, four minutes. Okay. So here are some testimonials from the Elgin ISD superintendent, um, I mean board president, uh, Ann Callahan from Stephenville ISD, um, Mr. Perez from Roma, and then... Uh, those are just some of the testimonials that, that we, we collect. If you get the Lone Star magazine, you see a new testimonial every time in here. And so here are some of the Region uh, 20 searches. I will tell you the Shirt Cibolo search we've done twice. To, uh, we were called back to do it again. Um, and those are some of the other ones. We're at Southwest right now. Uh, about to wrap that one up. And Bernie, we've done several times. And these are just some of, some of the uh, districts that we've done. So I'll let you summarize. Okay. Well, you have heard our, we have experience in this. Uh, we've done this. You can have a long history of success. Uh, we have about, a, I think it's the last time we polled, it was 90, I think it was 98% sat, satisfied or very satisfied with our overall process that we we uh, collect from board presidents when we do a search. And so we're really happy with that. And got, that's kind of the five star, if you will. I think everything's a star nowadays. So we work for, with you and for you through this process. So there's no cookie cutter. We don't, we don't have a stamp and this is the way you have to do it to conform to us. We conform to what you desire. That's, that's what we do. The main objective in the whole point of this is we want to work with you to find the best leader for Judson ISD. We feel like that's the most important thing. And finally, I have to go back home because my very best friend was the drum major of Judson High. And uh, he always tells me about, you know, the time that he spent here in Judson. And so he's my lifelong best buddy. And uh, so I told him, I said, hey, we're going to Judson. He goes, you're going to my home place? I said, yes, I am. And I invited him to come, but he wouldn't. So anyway, but uh, he's, uh, uh, he is the uh, uh, greatest guy in the whole world. And so anyway, we, uh, we thank you for this opportunity. And we can answer your questions. Thank you so much. Um, is there, are there any questions? Yes. Miss Eaton. You know, I was over here trying to push this button. Um, I understand that um, when superintendents leave uh, a district under other than maybe favorable conditions, but not something so severe that there's a reprimand that, well, you know, everybody has to be notified. Is there a way for uh, your firm to, or to be able to detect that so that we just, not that for me personally, I would use that to judge the person, but I would just like to know, are you just floating through districts and combined with that, are you using us as just a stepping stone to your next job? Uh, that's a good question. And what we do, because we have such a history of being in every district in the state of Texas, and then I have a relationship with uh, colleagues around the United States, so there's no one out there that we can't reach out and, and find out information about. You know, sometimes you hear these things that go on and, and it's hush-hush in the district, but, you know, it's kind of either social media or something, you know, you pick up some things, and we share that with the board. Now, 
We don't pass on innuendos or rumors or things like that, so we stick to the facts. And if the facts are out there, then we will share that with you, what we've uncovered. A uh, quick history. I, would, we, I was doing a search in Northeast Texas, and there was a candidate, and his resume looked, it was the best thing since sliced bread. So I called my colleague in the state that this person was from and said, listen, tell me about this. This guy looks too good to be true. He said, well, uh, he, he's great on paper. But as a superintendent, he's shown up to his board meetings drunk twice. And I said, well, okay, that probably won't fly very well down here. And so, you know, that wasn't out there. But by doing some digging, you know, we found some things like that. You know, that's just one story. Now, we find out for every one bad thing, we probably find out 10 or 12, 15 good things about uh, the accomplishments of, of superintendents that are out there in the field. But we do do our due diligence. Sure, thank you. Other questions? Mr. Macias. Thank you for the presentation. I have a couple of questions. One is the, the board itself has not decided um, what salary range to move the superintendent's uh, position going forward. Would you be part of that process that gives us recommendations uh, for any adjustments in salary? Yes, and we will bring you the latest information about districts your size and also districts in Region 20 and what their current salary and benefits are through TASB because our HR division uh, is the one that conducts those. So we're going to bring you all that information and it, it will be a good starting point for you to actually look at if there's someone especially that you're uh, competing with or that you're very interested in that's uh, in your district or whatever, those that information will be there. You will have current information and then we will guide you. The, our application includes, every, every applicant will have to give you what their current salary is in the application. So you're gonna see what they're making before you ever select anyone to come in and talk to. So, um, you know, there are a lot of reasons that people would move to Judson. Because it's Judson and because of where you are on I-35, all of those things play in. So we don't want you to eliminate someone because they're already making four, $400,000 because there may be another reason that they wanna come here. But you're gonna have all that information and then we're gonna do the digging and find out that and help you with that. And I know that you talked briefly about utilizing neighboring states or states across the country where you provide information and, and, and so forth. How many has TASB brought into Texas that have been from out of state? We, ha uh, we brought in four from out of state. Right, and this previous year? In 2022 or? No, in the past. And what we've been, since I've been at TASB, I've helped bring in four from out of state. Ninety. I would say 95% of the district in the state of Texas, sometimes they'll, they'll look for the outside person, but they come back and hire from inside the state of Texas about 95% of the time. And uh, you can probably count on both hands how many superintendents right now currently in the state of Texas are from out, have come from outside the state of Texas. So the other, 100, uh, the other thousand has, are from within the state of Texas. And so, and we, but you know, it's not, we can certainly reach out to those that are out of state. You know, we have no problem with that because there's not anybody out there we can't find and reach out to. Um, and then, you know, going back to your original question, we help negotiate with you and that candidate negotiations on the contract until we get that settled. I will also add 100% of our districts have out of state applicants. There's always out-of-state applicants in every search that we do, no matter how large or how small. And I guess my last question for right now would be, in terms of, we're gonna discuss timeline here in a little bit, in terms of when we, what adjustments need to be made. Um, you are the experts, you've been through this, I want your opinion on the timeline. I think an initial consideration was by the end of March. So I'm wondering, will the pool of potential applicants be limited because we're doing this in with the goal of March? Or is it better, in your opinion, to wait towards uh, the, the end of the school year? I just want to get a sense of what your thought is on that. 
I'll answer it kind of indirectly first and then back to it. Uh, we can structure the search process however you want it to be. If it's short, we can do short. If it's long, we can do long. On the average, the average superintendent search from the planning meeting to you voting to hire is 120 calendar days. So you can kind of figure that out. Because of all the processes that go inside of it, uh, you know, we don't want to rush it so much that you're getting the, you know, you're going uh, not anything to McDonald's, but we don't want to run through the McDonald's, you know, drive through and, you know, it's just like that. We want to make sure that we're casting the net as far as we can to get the best person that's out there, uh, whether it be here or whether it be out there. Uh, so that's the process. But again, we've done, we've done a search in as, many, as little as 45 days. And we've done the actual 120 days, and then we've gone even longer than that. So we structure it to your best. We found over the years that the best is around the 120 calendar days. But that's what we found. But again, your, your decision. And you did answer the question that we could find a pool of applicants if we were targeting uh, under 120 days? Yes. In fact, this is the time when superintendents have gotten everything, you know, school is well into the year. And we find this is the time when superintendents get a little bit antsy about, am I going to be here next year or am I, am I looking for another opportunity? So if they get in, if we get this done by the end of March, beginning of April, uh, they will be able to have a lot of impact on the budget, on the hiring process. So this is actually a really good time to do a search, and you will have quality applicants here. Other questions? Mr. Diaz? Uh, thank you for the presentation. So one of the foundational and central tenets of our work here has been around our board superintendent constraints and goals, very much student-centered on academics. How do you all ensure that you properly convey to applicants what our goals are so that they're aware of, fully appreciate, and can communicate their ability or purported ability to meet our goals with our framework? Again, back to the qualifications and characteristics, your goals would be perfect to have within the application process, and every applicant can address every goal as to how they've accomplished or are working on those specific areas in their current districts or in districts that they've been in. Um, you know, that is not, academics should be at the forefront. We, I mean, that's why we're, that's, what schools are about. But we can design those so that they are answering exactly what you want to know about them and what experience they have in the areas that are most important to you. And I think your goals fit perfectly uh, within that framework. Any other questions? And Mr. We Diaz. We have time for one more. Mr. Diaz. Mm -hmm. oh. We also, we're going to have a, you're going to have a good picture of what these candidates bring. And we're looking for the strengths of each candidate and how they address and how they would work inside your district. So, you know, the picture will be there, you know, plainly in front of you. And we work with you and, and you work with us and to identify, you know, those top quality candidates that will be in there. And then just last question for you, um, knowing that, that the environment right now and the ecosystem is heavily focused on recruiting, have you all had to change your approach to recruitment um, kind of at a high level? Do you already have a Rolodex, a bench of potential applicants, or are we starting from scratch? And I don't mean to say that in a negative way whatsoever. Um, so I'm just curious about existing bench versus discovering, uncovering, untapped potential in, in potential applicants? We have a database 
but we don't go out and we just don't flip through that, you know, the old Rolodex. We don't say, okay, let's see who we can get to apply for the job. We're always looking to uncover, you know, the diamonds in the rough, if you will. We're looking for the rising stars that are out there. And those are the ones that, you know, we hone into. Also, we want to see the ones that have been successful in their current district and how it's applicable. Can they translate that to Judson ISD? We feel like that's important is how, you know, their characteristics will come in and how they hone in with what your goals are for this district. And so we feel like that's important. Not everybody in, what, in our database will fit that. You know, so we're going to have we're going to do our homework as well. And but we're also looking because, you know, we have touch points all across the state of Texas and beyond for these types of folks that match your characteristics and what you're looking for. And so we do start from scratch. Every every search begins at ground zero. They have to reapply with us for that specific position. So there is no one that's actually moved over uh, in, in a certain way. All right. Are there any other last questions from the board? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us Thank and you. good luck. Thank right. you. This is, this is super important. We know how important it is. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. They're in the center. And there's two for them because they have a link. So, oh no, what was JG? So it tries to. Yeah. Interesting. She's got it. She's, oh, okay. she's going to okay, do that. She's touch okay. <laughs> thank you. Well, good evening, and uh, we want to thank you for considering uh, Hazard Young and Atia as your search consultant. We appreciate that very much, and look forward to uh, discussing our proposal with you. Sir, would you speak more clearly into the microphone? Thank sure. you. Sure. You want me to start over? Okay. <laughs> Um, so anyway, we'll go through and highlight our approach and obviously uh, we're happy to entertain questions that you might have uh, as we get to the end or any time you want to stop us as we go through. Uh, we have uh, three of us here this evening. There are four currently on our team. Uh, I'll introduce the person who is not here in a minute. But what we'd like to do first, I know you have uh, had our proposal and you've seen information about us, but we'll just take a, about two minutes and introduce ourselves briefly. My name is Rick Berry. I am a retired superintendent. I was a uh, superintendent in the Arlington School District uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for four years, and then I was recruited to go to Cypress Fairbanks in the Houston area 
uh, superintendent there for 12 years. Uh, those are two, obviously, you probably know that, very large school districts in Texas and very diverse school districts. Uh, since retiring, uh, I have worked with uh, three or four uh, companies that work in education, one of those being Hazard Young and Atia. That's the short version. So I'll let uh, my partners introduce, and I'll, I'll do Dr. Flynn last. It's good evening. I am Jody Duran. Uh, I just recently retired after 31 years of public school education. Um, 29 of those years were spent in leadership positions uh, in various areas, uh, campus administration, uh, human resources, curriculum and instruction. And then in the last 10 years, I was the superintendent of Elgin ISD just down the road from you all. Um, I have worked um, in school districts across the state, suburban, urban, rural districts. Um, I've worked at all levels, K-12. I've also been an adjunct professor, um, training uh, future leaders and administrators um, for leadership positions. I am also currently, in addition to working with HYA, I am uh, the associate director for the Texas Association of Mid-Sized Schools. Uh, we uh, uh, support 25% of the school districts in Texas, um, particularly in the area of, ad of advocacy. Hi, I'm Nola Wellman. I worked, uh, began my career in Texas, and then after a year of teaching in the Panhandle, went to Colorado. I had 31 years of education in the state, uh, teaching and being a principal and an associate superintendent in uh, the Cherry Creek School District outside of the Denver area. Became a principal in Estes Park. Some of you may have known that. I look for pretty places to work, and that was one of them. And then uh, finished 16 years in the Cherry Creek School District, and then was recruited and actually went through the Hazard Young Atia process as a candidate and became superintendent in the Ean School District in the Austin area for almost 11 years. And I retired in 2014. Ian's board also used Hazard Young and Atia for selection for my successor, and at that point I was asked to join. And since 2014, you'll see we've done quite a few searches together um, in using this particular process. So, thank you. The other member of our team is Dr. Peter Flynn. Uh, Dr. Flynn isn't with us this evening, but he uh, is also a retired superintendent. He had uh, 34 years as a superintendent, as a superintendent, not an educator, in four states. He was in Pennsylvania, uh, Iowa, Kentucky, and lastly in Illinois. He retired as a superintendent in Illinois. Uh, Peter has been uh, working with us on Texas searches for the last 11 years. Uh, he's a senior associate. Uh, with Hazard Young and Atiyah, as uh, Nola and I are, and uh, his uh, national presence uh, in those four states, as well as other activities, uh, gives us a national perspective, along with the other 100 plus consultants that we have that are a part of HYA. So the next slide, uh, we just wanted to share with you, our primary goal is to help you as a board to select a leader who understands your mission and has a vision for uh, your students. And uh, there's a lot uh, more to it than that, but that sums it up. Uh, and I want to tell you now on this next slide just briefly a little bit about Hazard Young and Atia. We call it HYA. Uh, HYA is one of the largest and oldest executive search firms that does superintendent <laughs> searches in America. Uh, we have done over 1,600 searches since the beginning of the firm with school boards across the United States. Uh, we have 100 plus associate, associates just like us that uh, are, we all help each other in finding candidates uh, as well as support each other uh, sometimes behind the scenes as Peter Flynn is doing right now. And uh, we also have a full-time professional staff in Schaumburg, Illinois, which is the headquarters of the company uh, outside of Chicago. And we have a, a 
infrastructure, technology infrastructure as well. It's probably second to none in this business. And uh, we have that national reach because of uh, the way the firm is structured as well as the local focus that we give to every school district that we work with on their particular search. And our process, as you will see in our proposal and as we go through a process, if you hire us, is research informed, including the survey that we use. So I believe that's now time for Noah. The next slide shows you our four phases, and we distinctly will go through these phases. Uh, now I'll explain them to you, but um, they are engage, and that's where we engage with you particularly and with the community to get input about the superintendent, uh, your future leader. We recruit, you select, and then we tra help you transition through uh, to your next superintendent. In the inclusive, uh, I'm sorry, I skipped, uh, engage phase, this, the key components are just to develop a plan with you. What do you have on your mind? What are your expectations? What are you thinking about this search so that we develop that in the plan? We, we work with you on the steps that it will take in terms of gathering community engagement, and that includes face-to-face, uh, using technology, we'll use some Zoom, and we also will use the research-based survey. We usually do about 25 to 30 meetings um, in order to get, gather that input, and, ho and we can also, at your uh, direction, let us know what other members of the community you think are really need a specific invitation to provide some input. Based on that information, that whole uh, gathering of information, we develop a leadership profile. And that uh, profile will have the selection criteria specifically that has been enumerated through this process. And with your approval, we will then seek uh, the desired characteristics of the next leader for Judson. We prepare a recruitment strategy with publicity associated with that, and we move through into the recruitment phase. That's where we advertise and we proactively recruit based on that leadership profile. Uh, through, throughout this, if we're fortunate enough to be your firm, you will hear us say, what did we say and what did you say in the leadership profile as the kind of person and the characteristics of the person we're looking for? We again, like uh, Rick said, we, we uh, reach out to our contacts with TASA, the national organizations that we are associated with. We actually do all the screening interviews for you and work through presenting a slate of candidates that we uh, believe match your profile. With that slate, we will prepare interview questions for you um, that you have given us questions and we'll put those together in a, in a question, uh, in a format for you. Um, we will then do an interview workshop on the do's and don'ts of some things you cannot ask in interviews and the things you should be asking and drilling down and asking about. And we will also do all the reference checks, both the ones of the references they give us and the ones that we uh, know from around that we need to check confidentially. Um, we will continue to provide support with a deep background check for your top candidates to make sure that there isn't anything that would be a surprise. Nobody likes surprises in this arena. Uh, during the transition, you will appoint your loan finalist and assist. we can assist you with any parts of this uh, contract negotiations or some kind of 90-day success plan. We will communicate with the unsuccessful applicants and we can provide uh, support services um, as you desire. And I'll pass it on to Jody now. So effective and timely communication with the board is one of our key components of this process. And so we begin by um, 
establishing a board portal that will, elite, uh, that, that will allow each of you to have access to um, search documents as they are uploaded into the system. Uh, you can access those on any device at any time uh, as long as you have access to the internet. Um, during this communication phase or the, the, uh, this phase, the board portal uh, will include templates, um, sample questions for interviewing, just as Nola mentioned, we would help prepare those questions. Uh, it includes much more, um, but we will also stay in close contact with you as we work through this process, keeping you up to date, whether that's through email communication, uh, through workshops that we schedule with you. Um, for example, uh, we will, during our planning meeting, we will establish a planning calendar for the entire search. Uh, that will be an important part of this process. Um, just, as it is, just as it is important that we continue to communicate with you, we want to make sure that the community is well informed about the process that is happening. And so we'll work closely with your communication department, providing them information to include on your website. Uh, we generally recommend uh, that you designate a full page uh, for the search, but we will help and work with you on uploading that information. Apologize, my pages are stuck. So this is our this is our process, and uh, I would remind you that it is customizable, um, and our commitment to you is to make sure that we address and meet the needs uh, of what you want to see in your next leader. We will work with you to make sure that that happens. Um, we have a wide uh, range of uh, support from our associates that can help within our firm. Uh, to ensure that that happens. Uh, we are, are also fully committed uh, to ensuring equity within our process. We do that uh, by identifying, supporting, uh, and, and placing diverse district leaders. Um, many districts often want candidates with relevant and uh, successful experience uh, in addressing opportunity gaps and leading with an equity lens. Um, we know how to find those candidates that can do that. Um, it's important to note that uh, members of our team uh, are actively involved and engaged with organizations such as ALAS and NABZ. Um, we have presented at many of their conferences. Uh, we have also interacted and connected with um, future superintendents uh, at those conferences. Um, at the bottom line, we have the resources and networks to actively recruit uh, a diverse group of talent uh, to bring before you. Attached to your, or I don't think it was attached, but in addition to uh, the PowerPoint by paper, I gave you a sample calendar that's a single page, because it's easier to read than the one that's in the PowerPoint. But this is just a possibility that we would go through and modify during the planning meeting. But on this calendar, <laughs> we just kind of start at the end, with the end in mind, with the assumption that a July 1st date would be the start date for your new superintendent, and we move backwards on making sure the loan finalist and that person has had an opportunity to um, move or if they need to move or whatever needs to take place, that there's an opportunity for that backwards to the naming of the loan finalists and you have the 24, 21 days that's required and we move through. You will see that we have um, naming of a loan finest around the first of the, of the month of May, that we would look to present a slate to you around the first of April. We would do our major recruiting at the end of February and in through March time frame. And so you can see how that works backwards. Again, we need to bring your cat personal oh, calendars. Is we that need the timer? Oh, sorry. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> no, I, I had 15 on my watch and that was, my timer just went off too. Okay. So no, you're okay. fine, but you can finish up okay. your thought. Let me just, uh, the next one is our searches that we have done in the last few years. And just to share with you, nine of the 14th completed searches here were either the finalists selected was either female, African-American, or, or Hispanic. 
And I think you had asked about people leaving. Of all of these searches, we have three that have left at this point and four that have retired in the last 10 years of the, of the candidates that we have actually um, had placed. So um, the last two pages are our guarantee and we're ready for questions and answers. And we can go through our guarantee if you would like. Are there any questions? Ms. Michelle. Yes. Um, I, I, I'll just ask either of you. Um, in 2022, there was a search at Fort Worth Independent School District. Um, I just want to know if that person is still there, are they still employed at Fort Worth? They, yes. Yes. They Fort came Bend in. ISD? Yeah. Yes. Is yes. that person still employed? Yes. Um, I'd like to go down a little. You did say that a few of them yes. have retired. Let okay. me ask you about Garland, Texas. He's still, still there. there. Okay. Let me ask you, I'm going to go to Fort Worth, Texas. She's there. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm, I was interested in your success rate and if those people are still there. Um, and you did mention that um, you have an emphasis on urban districts, which is what we are, highly diversified. Um, you also have an interest in um, finding those people that look very much like the district that we serve. I appreciate that. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Macias? Yes, I just wanted to, get to, to be clear. The address for your headquarters is, is in Illinois. Did I read that Schomburg, correctly? Illinois. So uh, you are all from Texas? or Okay, so. Well, I'm, we, we all serve in Texas. I still I live in the Braunfels now. I was in Arlington and Houston. Okay. You live I live in Elgin, Texas still. Okay. And seven of my grandchildren are in Denver, Colorado, and so I live in Denver. <laughs> and, and that's okay. Otherwise, I retire you must from go back. Texas. Well, the, the reason for the question is because I, I do have a personal interest in seeing a, a national search in terms of looking for potential candidates and districts that may mirror our, our district outside of the state. So uh, I, I saw the list of Texas candidates, but do you have a successful rate of bringing in folks from outside of Texas and working here? In the Every state? slate that we've presented in the last 11 years has included out-of-state candidates. We have had uh, at least one that yeah. was selected. I, I think there's two, and I can't remember yeah. on right now, but yeah. uh, we so have... Eans. The person that followed yeah. me was but we've always had one or two, at least, some, in, in one case, I think, three out-of-state candidates in our slates we presented to the board. So we do recruit nationally, and we have a network that enables us to do that, as well as we attend all state and national superintendent conferences. And, and so we're constantly meeting new people. We, working our network and that we have all over the country and especially in Texas. And the other similar question that I'd like your input on is simply in terms of salary. Uh, this We have not decided on what we want to compensate this position, but based on your national perspective, will there be some insight that you'll be providing? We always do that. Uh, we, are, uh, we recommend you not consider salary at this point. We, our recommendation is that you let us work with you, help you find the best superintendent that you can find that meets your profile and what you need, and then let's talk about salary and benefits and see how you compare and then what you're willing to do. And we will sh uh, provide for you market information about like districts in Texas, out of state, what they're paying, what their benefit package looks like, so you know what your competition is. And then we also will remind you that you're hiring for the next year. Most of the market information that we will have for you will be based on last year. That's the most up-to-date that we can get. So we, we make you aware of all of the aspects related to compensation 
and benefits. So you can have, uh, you can make an informed decision about what's best for you to do. And we, the other thing we will remind you is that you make the decisions. We make recommendations, we do the work, you make all the decisions. We'll not try to make decisions for you. Sometimes we will make recommendations very strongly and then we'll give you all the reasons why we're making that such a strong recommendation, but you will make the decisions if you're working with us. That's all I have, thank you. Other questions? No. Uh, Ms. Pichelle and then Mr. Deal. I did uh, notice that you said that you would be conducting 25 to 30 meetings. That's quite a few meetings. So since you all are not here locally, um, will those meetings for the most part be virtual? What we do is schedule about two and a half to three days on site and all of us will be here and each of us can run, in an hour's time, we can run three meetings. And so over the course of the three days, we can uh, have a significant number of those meetings. Eight of the, seven of the meetings will be you, and we can do that by phone or we can do it in person. If there are specific people that you think we need to visit with one-on-one -on -one or in a small group, we can certainly do that Zoom later. Um, we can do all of those ways, but we like to have a buildup of this engagement part where we can get into a, a school and have a, a representative group of students there and uh, be able to talk with them about how important this is for them and have them contribute. We have the same five questions we ask everybody, the same ones that we'll ask you and uh, that we ask every group and we write all those answers down and then that feeds into we then pull that all together and feeds into the leadership profile report. And you start seeing those patterns um, of what the people in the community feel about the next leader and what's important. And the staff members. Uh, we include staff members all across the district. I see. Thank you. Mr. Diaz. Thank you. Um, one of the foundational aspects and focuses of our work and commitment is to scholar success. So we've gone through a very rigorous and extensive process in setting our Lone Star Governance Framework, um, which convey our values and our focus and align our work to that student's scholar success. How do you all use, how do you plan to use our framework to engage the right candidates so that they can, that they are aware, appreciate, and can draw a through line between their experience and aptitude to our, to our framework. Sure. Uh, but we both, go ahead, you start. Fort Worth <laughs> was also a Lone Star governments, governance uh, district. And so we used that foundation in our questioning when we started screening candidates so that we make sure that it's pulled all the way through the whole, the whole process. But um, so it will be an important part of that, of that process of selection. Yeah, we always bring uh, that up with if a district board is involved in the Lone Star governance, we bring all of that information to the, the candidates. Anybody that we uh, see as a serious candidate, we'll make them aware of that. We'll answer questions for them, uh, suggest they uh, go online, watch your board meetings. Yeah see what your discussions are along those lines and uh, try to keep them informed. And then uh, through our process of interviewing them, we'll ask a lot of questions regarding those. And then my other question is, um, so what's your approach to, to candidates themselves, to procuring candidates? Do you already have a bench of ready and willing candidates or are you truly doing discovery? So and by the, by the smile question. and the grin, I'm assuming you get this question a lot. We have had okay. this question a lot. And for us, 
it's a clean slate when we start because our foundation is that leadership profile and your Lone Star governance. And that leadership profile will be the document that we look for the candidates that match that. And we can't do that if we don't know what the, the characteristics are that we're looking for. So we can't bring a slate of candidates and just hope that they can meet those characteristics. We want the person that truly has demonstrated evidence that we can see and that we can present to you in graphic form. They have accomplished this that you said was important in your desired characteristics. There's a lot of things that go into that. Uh, we know most of the superintendents in Texas, and we know a lot of superintendents around the country, and we're meeting new ones all the time through our network that we have. And so we, because we know so many, we know some people that we don't count them as in our stable or our slate of candidates, but we know some people who are just really good superintendents. And we try to stay in touch with those people and find out if they have an interest in ever being considered for another job. So we know that, that's background information. We also know because we've gotten to know them pretty well, what their situation is with their board, with their staff, what their situation is with their family. Do they have kids in middle or high school? Usually they don't want to move then. And so a lot of times when we will talk to a superintendent, we'll recruit them and we may recruit them really hard because we see a match, a very possible match, and they'll tell us, look, not now. I've got a kid that's a sophomore or a junior in high school, maybe in a couple of years, if you got a match for me, come and talk to me. So we, we have all of that as background information. So we have some people that possibly in your case that might be ready that weren't ready and they would meet your profile. We'll, we'll definitely talk to those people because we know that that's a possibility. But we don't, have, we don't come into any search with, okay, well, it's going to be so and so and so and so and so. We want to match that profile. We want to match what you need, what you told us, what your community told us and what your staff told us when we put it all together in a leadership profile. That really drives our decision making on recommendations. All right, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming and presenting and we'll be discussing after the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here, JC Penny Beauty. We're gonna get through the advertisement now. JG Consulting is.
else. Yeah. If you'd have your video here um, so that it's through the advertisement that was on there, you can just click. Up. Yeah, that'll start your presentation. Okay. When you want to do the video that y'all had on that secondary piece, okay. it's on the second slide. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that. We have one board member who stepped out to take a break oh, okay. real quick, and then when she comes back, I'll give you the signal to start. We no were just problem. talking about Monday Night Football over here. Uh. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, I just grabbed my phone just so I can <laughs> appreciate that. All right. Well, we're all here now, so um, you can go ahead and get started. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, I'd like to echo the gentleman's sentiments that were expressed and shared earlier. So thank you for your service to public education and recognition of, of board, uh, board month. So thank you tremendously for all that you do in the spirit of service to public ed. Uh, my name is James Guerra. I'm the president and CEO of JG Consulting. It's an honor to be here with you this evening, and thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit more about our firm. Joining me this evening is Dr. Robert Jacklich, to my left, to some of your left and right, and also Letitia Anderson. Um, here in spirit is Dr. Pat Leonardis. Uh, she couldn't be here with us this evening because she has family in town. She currently resides in Fort Worth. Uh, she's a former interim superintendent in Fort Worth ISD and a longtime educator. Uh, one of the things I'd like to underscore and highlight for you this evening is that our team consists of more than 20 practitioners based in Texas. We're the only national firm that is based in Texas supporting um, school systems and superintendent searches specifically. And we also are the only group that has um, board experience representing the firm. So Ms. Anderson is a former trustee with the Austin Independent School District. And we have six others on our team that are based in Texas who are also former board members and sitting board members um, representing Houston ISD, Austin ISD, and a district north of Dallas ISD. So aside from this, the staff that and the team that you see before you this evening, we have full-time staff based in Austin. So not just myself where I currently reside, but our chief of staff, my administrative chief, and our, um, <clears throat> excuse me, our uh, coordinator, Andres Garcia. So you're gonna have the benefit of working with a very well-rounded team with not only the practitioners, but those who have also served in your respective roles as, as board members. And our mission is quite simple. So there, there's just a few words on this slide that I'd like to highlight. One is equitable, the second is inclusive, and the third is transparent. 
So our practice is to ensure that the uh, process is equitable, not only for you as board members, but also for the candidates. We're gonna do everything to which we're allowed, allowed to by law uh, with a degree of transparency. So anytime we're able to provide updates to you as a board publicly, we will do so. Um, and then everything that we, we do in terms of the community orientation and, and working with your staff, your students, and the constituents in whom you represent, we will do in a very inclusive manner. And we're gonna get a little bit more to that here in a moment. And the success can be measured in many ways, but ultimately it's the satisfaction of the board and then the outcomes of, of your students and whom that you serve. Um, so there's a lot of ways in which you can evaluate your superintendent. And I'm sure you have an, evalu uh, an evaluation tool and a metric or a rubric that you use, but ultimately the final outcome is the satisfaction of the board and, and those students that you serve. Some of our more recent and most recent searches include the Austin Independent School District, ALEAF ISD, Houston ISD, um, just down the road here in San Antonio Independent School District, and, and last but not least, coming soon, Judson ISD. Some differentiating factors I'd like to highlight and share with you this evening are those that you see on the right-hand side of the presentation. One is the interview portal. Uh, we utilize an on-demand interview tool which will enable you as a board to get to know the candidates before you choose or select them to come in for an interview, whether that's in person or in, uh, via Zoom or virtually. Um, the second is our cognitive test. We utilize what is known as the Wonderlick assessment to, to better identify the cognitive abilities of the candidates as it pertains to the leadership profile, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about here in a moment. Um, the third component is a career portal which is Fairly new to us, we recently launched what is called superintendentsearch.net. So envision something like indeed.com or a major job board where districts are empowered to take control of the advertisements. We can post as many job vacancies within our reach across the country utilizing our new tool, and that's superintendentsearch.net. And then lastly, the surveying component. We utilize quite a bit of technology, and you can see just based on our presentation, we like to, to use technology. The surveying that we will conduct and, and provide in terms of soliciting input and feedback from your community can be done in as many languages as you'd like. We're currently conducting two other superintendent searches at the moment, one in Kansas City Public Schools uh, in Missouri and the other in Des Moines, Iowa. Two large urban school systems in different states uh, however, they have more than 90 languages spoken in both communities. So our school board partners there um, had a very strong interest to conduct a number of surveys in multiple languages. This surveying tool enables us to do so. Um, one thing I did fail to mention is that we also have the ability while conducting your stakeholder meetings is conduct those affairs in Spanish as well as, of course, as in English. So if there's a Spanish speaking population you'd like for us to speak with, um, our staff is equipped to manage those, those meetings, um, both in English and in Spanish. The on-demand interview portal that I referenced a moment ago, this is what it looks like. Um, so this is a picture of Mr. Millard House, um, the current superintendent of Houston ISD. On the left-hand side, you can see the types of questions that we require each candidate to respond to. So when we present the candidates to you, we're gonna do so in closed session um, and provide you with a number of different artifacts and resources. Each of you will be provided with an iPad. On that iPad, we're gonna have all of the digital artifacts up, uploaded for your review with our team. You'll have the letters of interest, the resumes, the academic transcripts, confidentiality agreements, and any other artifact they wish to provide. In some cases, we might receive a 90-day entry plan, for example. You'll have access to all of that information. So in other words, we are not withholding any candidate information from you as a board. This is your decision to make, not ours. We do not have a stable of candidates where, where we are recycling one superintendent from District A to District B. We don't operate that way. In fact, in our contract, we even clearly state that we will never recruit your superintendent away from Judson ISD. So all of that information will be presented to you. So going back to my statement about inclusivity, Equi uh, that equitable approach and that degree of transparency, you will have all of the information readily available to you in that, in that manner, including the on-demand interviews. Um, the second thing that I touched on a moment ago was the Wonderlook assessment. So you'll notice that 
this particular assessment aligns to the leadership profile. On the right-hand side, you can see there are three primary areas for which we identify how closely a candidate will um, align to the job description, the leadership profile, which is the North Star that we're going to use. One is the cognitive ability for the job. Two is their degree of motivation, and three is personality. And it's mu treated much like a stoplight. So if you have green is go, your yellow is neutral, and your red is a hard stop. So if there's an indicator of red, for example, we'll be able to identify if there's some degree of deficiency within their skill set and their experience. So we'll be able to clearly articulate that for you. This is a screenshot of what our superintendent search portal looks like. Um, so we're enabled to provide any sort of um, job listing and can do this at, at no charge and we we'll provide this service for all of our clients across the country. The reason I like to call attention to this because we're the only firm that has that degree of, of a reach east coast to west coast. Um, you'll notice there on the screen that not only are we conducting superintendent searches, but we also support um, principal searches, chief academic officer searches, general counsel, um, chief financial officer, anything executive level, we have the ability to support and to provide that degree of service for our, our school board partners. We've conducted more than 200 executive level searches during the past eight years. Um, in fact, we've even diversified over the past few years. Um, a couple years ago, Dr. J and I conducted the city manager search just next door in the city of Cibolo. Um, so their current city manager is somebody that we recruited. Um, and then again, also San Antonio ISD and, and then others around um, this area. The surveying tool, the, demog the data that we're able to disaggregate looks a little bit like this. Um, so we're going to be able to show you a summative report, and then essentially it's a synopsis, a high-level overview of everything we've heard from your community members. So as we begin the search process, we are, we are going to ask you, because as trustees, no one knows the community better than you. So we're going to ask you a series of questions. One of those questions will be, who in the community would you like us to meet with? Are there specific groups, small groups, large groups, macro, micro, student populations, parent groups, uh, clergy, men and women, all of the above. We're gonna go to every, every uh, end of the, of the community and, and solicit as much impact, input and feedback to develop a meaningful uh, leadership profile that encompasses all of those voices. So that's very important. We're gonna spend a considerable amount of time hearing from your community, your staff, and your students. And as we're doing this, we're gonna have online surveys running simultaneously to solicit input. These surveys are done anonymously to protect the anonymity of your community members. Um, and we're gonna be able to disaggregate the data in a very meaningful way to make sense of what we've heard. And we're gonna share all of this feedback with you publicly and then go, go a step further and support your communications department and develop a web page which will reside on the district's website for ongoing updates with respect to the major milestones of the search, where we are in the process. And again, all in the spirit of transparency. I'm just looking at the time. We've got a few more minutes, and I'm going through this as quickly as I can. Um, the recruitment. Earlier, I alluded to the fact that we're a national firm. We are based in Texas. We work at the will of the board, and you'll hear me say this often. If it's the will of the board for us to cast a wide net and to recruit all across the country, that, that is your directive and your charge to give us. That is our experience, but that doesn't mean that you're necessarily beholden to that. We work with both the traditional educators and non-traditionals. I mentioned earlier that we are a very diversified firm in terms of our practice. We can recruit from the nonprofit, uh, uh, through the nonprofit lens, the business lens, the philanthropic lens, and of course, the traditional public school settings. We work with a lot of the state affiliates and the national affiliates, a few here that I'll call attention to, the American Association of School Administrators and the local affiliate, Texas Association of School Administrators. I'm actually speaking on a panel uh, during our uh, TASA Midwinter Conference at the end of the month, uh, along with uh, some of the colleagues and our, our counterparts who you met this evening, um, discussing the superintendent search process. We also run our own Leadership Academy, a cohort of approximately 30 aspiring superintendents. The particular cohort right now that we're in will graduate at the end of this month. And so we have sitting superintendents who coach that, that um, that particular cohort. 
And then we also provide governance training as well. So several of our colleagues are certified um, governance trainers across the state and across the country. Uh, one of whom um, serves as a superintendent of residency with the Council of the Great City Schools. That's Dr. Michael Hinojosa. Um, he's a member of our team. And Alton Fraley, retired superintendent of KDISD, is also um, a member of the team. And he works very closely with AASA and is a past president of the association. Um, then the last organization I'll mention is ALAS, the Association of Latino Administrators Superintendents. Dr. Linares, who is a member of this team supporting Judson ISD, she's one of the founding members of ALAS. Um, so and I all to say that we have deep ties with each of these associations. All right, uh, so this is a tentative search timeline. Um, again, we work at the will of the board. So if you were to tell us, James, this is too fast or too slow, um, it is your prerogative to tell us how you feel about the timeline. We typically will manage a, a search in its entirety in four to five months. Um, our aim was to have a, a loan finalist named by April, so that way he or she, once they're named, can have a month or so to get acclimated to working with the community, transition themselves into the district, and then have the full month to, to further immerse themselves in the community and then have the full calendar school year to hit the ground running hard. Um, so that was our aim, but again, it's just a suggestion. It's by no means um, set in stone. Uh, the last couple things I'll talk about is earned media and some of the approaches that we take. So I, ta I talked a lot about some of the technology. Wanted to again acknowledge our thanks for giving us the opportunity to share our process with you this evening. That's a screenshot on the left hand side of my professional LinkedIn. So we've already started to socialize uh, this opportunity. I've had several sitting superintendents reach out to me wishing us luck this evening and also expressing their interest to serve as your next superintendent. You can see in a short period of time, we've had more than 1,300 impressions, um, and many of those uh, 40 plus likes are um, educators spread across the state and across the country. And lastly, we have retained the services of Identity PR. They're a large national uh, public relations firm out of Detroit. And so we'll be able to shine a very bright light on all the tremendous work that we'll be doing together to acknowledge this search and to amplify the work um, that, that we'll embark on. Uh, and I think we have 30 seconds, so I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to play this, but I'll just give you a glimpse of some of the things that we're doing. Oh, sorry. I Come on. It's here, JCPenney Beauty. Consulting is a powerhouse. They put you in a position to compete at very high levels. And I've been a superintendent now, going on my sixth year and I still have a very strong relationship with the firm, so it's, it's a long-term family-type environment with JG Consulting. Nice. My name is Dr. J. All right, I'll pause it there. Um, all of these videos can be viewed on our website, jgconsulting.us. Dr. Gonzalez is the proud superintendent of McAllen ISD and uh, former superintendent of the year from 2020. Um, so he was just gonna talk a little bit about this, but our testimonials are all online. So thank you for indulging me a little bit extra there. Thank you. Um, are there any questions from the board? No questions? <laughs> okay, Mr. Diaz, go ahead. Thank you for the presentation. Um, so I apologize to my colleagues because they've heard me ask this several times already. So one of the foundational tenets of our work and how we approach uh, serving scholars has been embedded and codified in our Lone Star Governance Framework. So how do you all, how do you propose to use that and have historically used whatever frameworks schools districts have to make candidates aware, appreciate, and then have them draw the through line between the framework and their abilities, aptitude, ideas to ensure that you're curating the right leadership profile for us and that they are fully aware of what the expectations are if hired, obviously. Oh, great question, and I appreciate that. Um, so one of the differentiators for us here locally in the state of Texas, we have staff members who are certified LSG trainers. So whatever your theory of action is and what those core tenants are will align to the leadership profile. So we can use that again as a, a supplement or a complement, if you will, to that North Star. Leadership profile for us is synonymous with the job description. 
But as we begin to, to learn from each of you, your community members, your staff, and your students, we want to understand what, how that closely aligns, all those tenants closely align to your theory of action, and specifically to Lone Star governance. Some of the things I can share that we have done most recently, like in San Antonio ISD, for example, um, AJ Crable, who was formerly with TEA and created a lot of what we now know to be Lone Star governance, is doing the same work now and transferred that knowledge to the Council of Great City Schools. We went through an exercise, a board retreat with San Antonio ISD and created what we call exclusionary criteria. What are your non-negotiables um, as far as vetting and reviewing candidates? And if, if the candidates don't have a certain attribute, a skill set, a quality, or even a characteristic that we as a board and as a firm feel um, or could qualify as a, exclusionary criteria or non-negotiable, we need to understand what that is. Um, but again, going back to my statement earlier, you know this community better than we do. I mean, we know what we can read into the editorials, what we can read into a taper report, all of the, the various uh, factoids that are out there made available to public consumption, but we're gonna require um, some candor from you to share with us what some of those, those tenants are and what you hold near and dear. But as far as LSG is concerned, we're well equipped to support you in that because many of our district partners in the state of Texas also follow the Lone Star Governance Framework. Mr. Macias. And you said you conducted the search for SAISD, is that correct? Yes, sir. How long did that process take? So I slept since then, but I, on average, four to five months is what our process generally takes. Uh, you know, we utilize a lot of technology to maximize efficiency and to be mindful of everyone's time. Ordinarily, the community stakeholder engagement will take anywhere from three weeks to a month, depending on the allotted time you, you afford to us. But on average for us, uh, superintendent search generally is around four months. And I think, um, was the candidate local? I mean, in the state or out of the state? Like out of the state. state. So yeah. we've conducted more than 30 um, superintendent searches since 2015, um, three of which in Texas have been out of state candidates. Mr. House in Houston ISD came from Tennessee. Um, Victoria ISD was Dr. J's uh, successor and he came from, I believe, Iowa at the time. Um, and then Dr. Aquino in San Antonio ISD has experience in Los Angeles, New York, and Denver. Okay, thank you. Yes, and, and Dr. J would like to say something. Sure. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board. My name is Robert Jack, which everybody calls me Dr. J. I had the privilege of being the interim superintendent for San Antonio ISD last year, and then this is my 41st year in education. And so I wanted to let you know from my perspective, I live here in San Antonio, and so if we get the search, you'll have me every day, all the time, right here locally. I've always been a big fan of Jetson ISD. You're, I say, 55.8 square miles of excellence. Um, is amazing and what I want you to know is uh, throughout our search there's three things that we will promise you in everything we do we're always going to be intentional we're always going to be meaningful we're always going to be purposeful in everything we do and so getting back to the search part I just want to clarify one thing the process of building um, the superintendent profile begins with you uh, James shared that with you, but we will meet with each individual board member for one hour, sit down individually, and ask you the questions that we will ask our community as well. And then we will take that and get some more information from you. And when we did the Austin search, we did that during COVID. We did 75 Zoom meetings and met with 1,200 individuals to build that profile. And whatever it takes for us to prepare that for you at Judson, so you will know that at the end of the day, the toughest decision you ever made, along with the most important decision you ever made, was selecting a superintendent of schools. And that it's so hard because you had such great candidates. And you'll be able to tell your community members that we did everything we possibly could to make sure we found the best superintendent and here that person is right here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Any other questions? Thank you so much.
Thank you again for the opportunity and thanks for your service. And congrats on, on the, uh, the two bond propositions for, for passing. A huge accomplishment, you know how hard of an undertaking that is for all of you. So I'm sure you can sleep a little bit easier at night now, but tremendous work. So thank you again for your time and good luck to you. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't know about the rest of the board, but I could use maybe a five minute um, stretch break. And then, so we will, um, we will recess right now and we'll come back in about five minutes.
Um, so we're all back. We're good to go. All right. So we will um, resume our, we'll, I guess, begin our discussion of um, the presentations that we heard. Um, I don't have a specific format to this, but I was thinking um, it could be helpful if we all took a moment and just ranked our one, two, three, um, and see where that puts us, if we, we have some consensus or... Um, yeah. Do people need a minute to think about how you'd rank them? One, two, three, or? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I would love to hear from everybody, so I might just do kind of a roll call down the row and ask folks what they think. Um, is there somebody who wants to go first? All right. I might start with you, Suzanne. Thanks. <laughs> um, I was. I, I, all the presentations were very good, mm -hmm. and I think they all could do a good job. But I was particularly impressed with um, HYA, and that's my first choice. Um, the procedure they go through and the fact that they're committed to looking at diverse candidates mm -hmm. is one of the things that sells me. Okay. Thank you. Ms. King? And... The one that I would choose for number one would be HYA as well. Okay. Um, what really stood out to me um, was regarding the equity and also um, utilizing focus groups, mm -hmm. a variety of focus groups. Okay. Um, Deborah? You are all three or just the first one? I can't. 
You can tell me the first one, or you can tell me all three. Uh, uh, like. Well, I, I had H Y A. Oh, so turn over my sheet. You had them first. Uh, H yeah, H Y A, and then Tasby, and then the other one was third because he okay. put me to sleep. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Diaz. I feel comfortable working with any of the firms. I think they're all they all have some good uh, pros. And I think they would all accommodate our process and, and approach and direction. Okay. Mr. Macias? <clears throat> I was actually, um, I, I'm okay with either um, JG or, or HYA. Um, I, I think both of them could do, could accommodate our goals. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, their, their timelines are are further than ours, so I will look forward to more extended conversation about what mm -hmm. that looks like, um, which I found interesting. I think what I really appreciated, though, about JG is that they have very local reference to SAISD and in picking the their superintendent. And um, I know there was a lot of work there. SAISD is, is much larger than Judson, and there were a lot of stakeholders and stakeholder meetings that they had to have to, to build um, that mm -hmm. process out so that gives me a little slight on on them but okay. i'm comfortable with either of them okay uh miss michelle i'm comfortable i'm comfortable with either um when i got this little note <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's not share that <laughs> okay <laughs> that, that was something that was interesting mm -hmm. um dr j is is pretty well known around mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and uh, I kept up with him as he was interim in SAISD but that was very interesting thank you for that um, HYA was first preference then JG and then TASPY but either of them uh, my focus was is on what something that uh, Mr. Diaz brought up each time and um, very significant that mm -hmm. they would be able to work within our government our mm -hmm. governing framework that we're working uh, in and uh, because we're an urban district I'm very interested in the diversity that they bring yeah um, well it sounds like we're very much in consensus I also gave a, an edge to HYA I thought all of the presentations gave us what we asked for um, you know it honestly it seems like most search firms act in very similar ways. I think the only thing, the thing that gave the edge to HYA for me was um, their focus on diversity, but also I, I guess I could, should have asked more questions about this, but the cognitive assessment for JG, I thought that was actually kind of weird. Um, and it seems like that might actually lead to less equity in a process. Um, but I, I, that would be something I would dig in more on if, if that was the way that the board was leaning. Um, but, um, yeah, so I was also, um, uh, most swayed by HYA's presentation, um, particularly the, the way that they, they named out the stakeholders that they would seek out feedback from, um, mentioning students. I think they were the only group that mentioned students explicitly in bringing them into the process. So. Um, that was compelling to me. All right. Um, well, is is I do have a comment. Mm -hmm. before yes. you, were you about to make the motion? No, I wasn't. Um, I think the only other thing that um, we uh, we didn't ask this specifically because it was in the RFQs were were fees and how that's calculated and things. HYA, if I remember correctly, also said they would be competitive with any bid as well, and so. That might be something if we did go with them that we could use as a negotiating point if their fees were their fees were I think slightly higher than, they were higher than the some of the others. Yeah, so, and that's what my comment was. Yeah. So I want okay. to know what we would do in terms of assuring that we yeah. get a competitive. Yeah. Uh, and call. and that was why I was thinking a ranking of of them, and so um, that just so that you know, if we did go to negotiate and it didn't come out the way that we wanted to, it sounds like people were pretty comfortable with any of them, and if things broke down, that we could go on to another one. But I think I I don't think I'd do that without the boards bringing that back to the board and saying here's where we got to. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. 
All right. Um, was there any other discussion that people wanted to have um, before we make a motion? Okay. Um, so, uh, is there somebody who would like to make the motion well, here? You know what? I yes, do have something else I want mm -hmm. um, We have the opportunity to negotiate with these folks. Mm -hmm. And um, HYA had that uh, schedule yes. of fees, 50% to be invoiced at one particular time, 25% mm -hmm. at another time. And that is something that uh, if we were to choose them, that I would like for us to talk with them about. Okay. That and uh, the schedule is our schedule. Now, mm -hmm. each of them gave us a preliminary schedule, mm -hmm. but our schedule is our schedule. So right. we want to make sure that that is the other thing okay. that they'd be willing to work. So with that us we on. would we would want to negotiate on fees, fees and uh -huh. and the and the timeline and the timeline. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think. Um, that was something that nobody proactively brought up, the fact that we do have board elections coming up in May. Um, but I think that was a, that's a significant factor in, in how we're determining our timeline. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, and, um, and of course, uh, I'll add that I'm the reverse. I want to extend the timeline. That's why I asked each one of them how long it takes, because I don't want to rush process. Right. I mean, that is absolutely unacceptable for us to rush through anything. Yeah. So if each one of them was putting 120 days to five months, I want to be respectful. 120 days is four months. I know, but it okay. was also five months. Uh -huh. also. So 120 days to five months. Yes. So just, just. Right. And, and I don't think that any of us on the board would move forward if we didn't feel comfortable with the candidates that they brought forward to us. Um, but I think we also agreed as a board that that was something, our preliminary timeline is something that we would um, try to wrap that up uh, but I'm not in, in the four that. month. The preliminary yeah. means it's tentative, not right. set in stone. Right. So I certainly wanted to know how this would work out before I decided it would be set in stone. Okay. So just know I am not tied to a March 30th timeline. Okay. Any other discussion? <laughs> All right, so um, I think that the motion language um, might need to include something about, and this isn't, I did not get a chance to ask our legal counsel about what the motion language might need to say in order to for the fees to be negotiated. Um, but I think if we say the motion language to have the president act on behalf of the board in negotiating with, um, then that would be helpful so that we can That's fine. have the authority to do yeah. that. Okay, somebody want to make a motion? Okay, thank you, Susan. I move that we select HYA as our superintendent search firm and delegate to the board president the responsibility to negotiate with the firm. Second. That was moved by Ms. Knoyer and seconded by Ms. King. And we will proceed to vote. That motion passes unanimously. And um, that is all of our items. So we will adjourn. The time now is 7.52 p.m. No, we'll, we'll do the...